want to give all glory and praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. We over here to let the Israelites know that you are the chosen people of God, which are you so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native and Seminole Indians. We are here glorifying the Most High's name in the name of His Son. We are here to, over here to open up and wake up the elect, the chosen people, you Israelites. You are the chosen people of God. That's right. We want to let you know that you're the chosen people of God. These people lie to you every day that you go to church. They tell you that all are welcome. They tell you that it's for the entire world. But it's a lie. You have to get into the Bible to find out the truth. Let's go with John 3.16. See what this say. Let's read it. Bring it out. The book of, the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out. For the Most High God so loved the world. For the Most High God loved what? For the, For the Most, Most High God, God so loved the world, the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, this is where they get confused. They say that the Most High God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Close the book, everybody happy. Yeah, yeehaw. Right. That is not uh -huh. true. Uh -huh. Let's finish reading it. That's what, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Most High God loved the entire world. So that whoever believed on his son, which he gave to the world because he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life because God loved the world this much. Y'all don't know who the world is that the Most High God is talking about. The Most High God loves the world. He does love the world. But it's a certain world. Right. It's not... The entire world. Uh -uh. There's more than one. Right. You don't understand this thing. This is why you have to be taught. How can I be taught unless a man teach me? Right. That's why we out here. We're about to teach you. Bring it out. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Bring it out. Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. What is that? World. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. That's right. The world of Israel is who he's talking about. He's not talking about the entire world. He's not talking about the heathen nations. He's talking about his 12 tribes that he has chosen. Right. He don't even like this world. He's actually at enmity with this world. You don't love this world. I mean, if you love this world, you're at enmity with God. Right. God said he don't even love this world. Let me show you that he don't love this world. Bring it out, James 4 and 4. This is the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4. Bring it out. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. That means that you're going against God. You're cheating on him. The men and women that are Israel, that are believing in these other nations, that are believing in these other customs, and that are following these other gods, that's why he called you adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Enmity means that you're at a disadvantage with God. That you're not at a forefront. That you're going against Him. You are at enmity with God if you love the world. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So if you love this world, you're what? You're an enemy of God. If you love this world, you're what? An enemy of God. That's right. If you love this world, you are an enemy of the Most High God. Brother, you keep scoffing over there like you know what you're talking about. And you don't have no idea what you're talking about. Right. You don't know what you're talking about, but we're bringing it out the Bible. You're coming out of your own mind. And that's a lot. We're not worried about you coming out of your own mind. And you're such a coward, you want to cross the street and talk to the real men of the Lord. Right. right. What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be teaching us. Right. If we learned from you, we wouldn't know a thing. Right. That's why we come out and thus said the Lord. Ah. The book of Sirach, chapter 42, and verse 8. Bring it out. Be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. Be what? Be, Be not, not ashamed, ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. And this is how we see you, brother. Unwise and foolish. And we're not ashamed to inform you. And the extreme aged. And you elder to us. You extremely aged to us. We're not ashamed to let you know where you're going off. If we didn't care about you, we wouldn't tell you anything. Right. And the extreme age that contended with those that are young. And we younger than you, and you contending with us. Yet, you still want to cross the street. That seemed like an elder coward. 
Thus shalt thou be truly learned and approved of all men living. Come on, you're going to be truly learned and approved of all men living. But if you're over there being an elder, thinking that you know what it is just because you have an elder age, la'a, your age doesn't make you smarter. I thought you had to read to be to be approved. Teacher. That you have to know what you're talking about to be approved in the Bible. Teacher. You can't just be out here saying oh, any old anything. You got to read and understand. You have to gain understanding. Right. That's how you get that wisdom. That's how you get that knowledge. That's how you get the understanding. You can't just think that you know something because you've been around the block. Right. I've been around the block too and I still didn't know nothing. Right. I had to find out who I was. I had to learn that I was an Israelite. I had to know that I was from one of the top tribes. I had to know that I came from the same tribe that Christ came from. And I wouldn't scoff against us. That'd be foolish. Right. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 12. Bring it up. Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise thy youth. We're talking to you, brother. Let no man despise thy youth. He ain't saying nothing now. But be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance to what? Give attendance to reading. How do we learn? Give attendance to reading. To exhortation, to doctrine. That's right. We got to give our attendance to this reading, to the exhortation, to the doctrine that's in this Bible. Right. We ain't worried about you over there at your little crossed arms, over there scoffing. You talking about nothing, and still ain't nobody listening to you. Right. You talking about you don't hear us? You hear me? I know you hear me. You hear me, brother? You got something to say? You ain't got nothing to say. Ain't nobody listening to that. Nobody listening to it. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 22. Bring it out. How long, ye simple ones? How long, ye simple ones? Will you love simplicity? Will you love the simplicity that you have? How long? And the scorners delight in their scorning. Look at that. You loving your own scorn and you don't even know what it is, but you're going against the men of the Lord? And fools hate knowledge. And who? And fools hate knowledge. What is this brother across the street? And fools hate knowledge. There's elder men that won't come talk to us? And fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. That's why you won't come over here and talk to us. And I just learned that from the doctrine. Right. I know now that fools hate knowledge. That's why he over there scoffing. That's why he won't come over here and talk to us like a man. Right. Because fools hate knowledge. Right. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 6. Bring it out. A scorner seeketh wisdom. A what? A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. But knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. That's right. Go from a foolish man, when thou perceivest from him the lips of knowledge. We out here to speak knowledge. We try to teach our people. You trying to take away the teachings. Right. We already been down bad. Our backs whipped. Us hurt. Us down at the bottom. Are you trying to make sure that we stay that way? Just because you older? And you still won't come over here. Right. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2 and verse 3. Bring it out. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Because you over there being proud with that mouth. You trying to get everybody around you to go against us. Right. Talk no more with that exceeding proud mouth. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. The, the Lord is a what? The For the Lord, Lord is a God, God of knowledge. knowledge. The Lord is who? The Lord For the Lord, Lord is, is a God, God of knowledge. knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. That's right. The Lord is a God of knowledge. By him actions are weighed. He still won't come down here and converse like me. Right. He'd rather talk and scream and holler. He jumping on the bus that ain't even his bus. I would do the same thing if I got cut up. He leaking. He got to go to the hospital now. Come on, man. We ain't worried about scoffers, right. scorners, or anything such as. Right. Why? Because we got knowledge right here. Right. Let's bring out some more. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 22. You know. For my people is foolish. For what? For my people is foolish. What is Israel? 
For my people is foolish. What was that old man at the bus stop? For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are solace children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. What do they not know how to do? But to do good, they have no knowledge. Nah, we all do good. To do good, they have no knowledge. They have no knowledge to do good. You're going to come up and boast and scoff against the men of the Lord. Let him have seen something actually wicked going on. He wouldn't have said a thing. Right. He would have sat right there on his butt and just waited. Right. He would have been like, oh, well, I hope it don't come to me. Right. Oh, why are you fighting right there? Dude, don't fall on me. Nah. Come on, man. We out here trying to get wisdom. We trying to give knowledge and understanding That's so right. we're breaking it down to you. We let you know what your church pastor won't let you know. We telling you what's in the book. Thus said the Lord. Ah. Not out of our own mouth. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And that's why he wanted to go against us. Because a brother contended is hard to be won. It was hard for us to win him over. We weren't going to win him over. And I think he had strong drink within him. I believe the brother was inebriated. He was not willing to talk to us because he was like a bar that's in a prison. It's hard to be bent. Hey, right. brother, you know your nationality? You know your nationality according to the Bible, shall I say? You do? You don't? What, what do they call you here in America? What would your nationality be here in America? African American, you see yourself on this sign then? On this side, be what they call you in the world. On this side, be your biblical name. You see African American on there? You don't see it at the very top right here? American black? So, you, what, what would your father see be? Okay, come back over here, man. How we gonna talk if you're walking off? You can't talk to me and, and keep walking off. Listen, man, you see Haitian, and that would be your dad, right? Okay, so the seed of your dad would be a Haitian, right? All right, you know that you in the Bible? You ain't know that you was in the Bible? We're about to let you know that you in the Bible. But you have to lead, you have to read under the Levites to know who you are. Because if you following after this man, you ain't ever going to think you in the Bible. If you think this, this, this is Jesus, and you think that this is your Savior, you ain't ever going to think you in the Bible. You're going to think she is. And that white dude over there. And all these white people. And you ain't gonna ever think that you in the Bible. Wow. But we gonna bring it out that you are in the Bible, brother. This is the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 23, verse 14. Bring it out. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. Of the tribe of who? Of the tribe of Levi. The tribe of who? The tribe of Levi. No, they the Haitians. The tribe of Levi. You are a Levite. You ain't no Haitian, you a Levite. You ain't no African American, you ain't no American black. You are a strong Israelite oh, from the tribe of Levi, bro. Right. You ain't supposed to just be here to walk up and down the street with your damn pants sagging. You a king, man. Right. You are God's chosen people, but as long as you don't know, they stay in charge. They stay up on top of you. They can lead us as long as you don't know who you are. They gonna be over top of you as long as you don't know who you are. Bring it up. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. You know who Moses was? He's a Levite. That's right. Just read it. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. He spoke to all Israel. He wasn't talking to everybody. The Most High God ain't the God of everybody. No, yeah. That's a lie. That's right. The Most High God is the God of these 12 tribes, and you just so happen to be part of them 12 tribes, brother. Did you know that? Did you know that God only loves a certain amount of people? You think God loves everybody? You know that God hates people? Did you know that? Let's bring it out the Bible, that God hates people. Let me get uh, Romans 9, 13. Malachi, this is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. Bring it out. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, 
But Esau have I hated. But what? But Esau have I hated. I thought God loved everybody. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. You know who Jacob and Esau are? You know the first white man's name is Esau, which means wasted away, and his twin brother's name Jacob, and they come from Isaac and Rebekah, your forefathers, your foremother. And the Most High God said that he hate the white brother. He hate Esau. Right. But I thought God loved everybody. God don't love everybody, brother. He only loved the people that's on this side. You got a favorite pair of shoes? At all, anywhere, at home. You got a favorite pair of shoes? That's like, you know, I keep these cleaner than the rest of them. I make sure these is better than the rest of them. Do you? You got anything that's a favorite to you? Not a thing. Well, you're different than the Most High God because he got a favorite people. That's right. His favorite people is the Israelites. That's right. That think that they blacks. That think that they niggas. That think that they colored. Wake them up. The Most High God has a favorite people. We going to tell you again out the Bible. This ain't my words. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Bring it out. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Holy means separate. That you set apart. That would be that favorite pair of shoes we talked about. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to, chose be a, you. to be a special people unto himself. To be what? To, to be, be a, a special people, people unto himself. himself. He chose you to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. No, we are equal on this planet. Above, above all people. people. Now every man is created equally. Above, above all people, people upon the face of the earth. You are above, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right. And you don't even know it. You have no idea who you are. Sister, you know who you are according to the Bible? You just gonna keep your back to me and not say nothing while I'm talking to you? You know who you are according to the Bible? Because, I mean, we having a conversation. Did you just step right in, put, my, put your back all up to me? Like, like you just gonna take the word away from him that fast? I mean, because if you ain't here to listen, he can, he can call you later. All right, but don't go yet. How you just gonna leave now in the middle of you finding out who you are and some of this stuff you ain't even know because you told me you ain't know. They can listen too. Don't you care more about your soul than having fun? Huh? You got a cell phone for a reason. You can text her or call her later, meet up, like, whenever. Right, brother? Yeah, I want her number. Okay, well, you can get her number later, man. That's what IG is for. That's what the phone is for. You trying to run away from the damn word? We trying to teach you. Right. We ain't got time for you to be running off. You ain't got time for you to be running off. Not if you care about your own soul. Because I care about your soul. I care about her soul, your soul, her soul, his soul. I'm trying to let y'all know who you are. According to the Bible, what the Most High God calls you. He said you are holy people. That you're set apart. That you're better than everybody upon the face of the earth. You one of the chosen. Right. You shouldn't be running away from that. And I'm glad you didn't. All praises to the most high. Oh. That you still here, you standing strong like a king, oh. a righteous man. That the most high said, his son said, my sheep hear my voice. That's what he said. He said, and they come to me. You come into the words, you hearkening unto this thing. And you a young man, usually young men won't even look at us. They just keep walking back. They don't even care. They don't give a dang about themselves, let alone somebody else. But I know that you got information just now out of here that you never heard before. Right? Right? You know what color Christ is? He a black man. Right. This is the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27. Bring it out. My sheep hear my voice. What did the Most High say? My sheep hear my voice. What did the Lord say? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I know them, and they follow me, right? Just like you wanted to do after that shorty just now. But you can't be looking at her as if you just want to go lay with her. Right. You can't be looking at her as if she's just a piece of meat. Uh -huh. You can't be looking at her like, man, I'm about to go get some of that. I want her number. Because that's how it came out. Uh -huh. Unless you're trying to actually take her and marry her and love her and teach her and have her forever and have her bear your children to raise up your children to be kings la ah don't even look at her teach her cuz it, it's crazy cuz how you going to do that to our sisters right how you going to do that to our family how you going to go out there and just make them whores you can't do that you go out there and lay with her and then all of a sudden you like ah 
She on to the next one. This ain't no Jay-Z song. On to the next one, my butt. Come on, man. You supposed to be thinking of her as a princess. That's right. Right? What does a king do to a princess? He what? The first, right? right? Not, oh, just give me your phone number. I just want to holler real quick. No! La -a. No! We can't be like that. That's how we got to this in the first place. Let me ask you this. You live with your dad? You live with your mom? You live with your grandparents? Are your mom and your dad together? Do you hear all this? These are curses that are in the Bible. This is a curse that we won't be with our family, that we will be taken away from the family. This is a curse. You think that I was just asking you just to ask you? No, I'm asking you so that you can get confirmation of who you are in this book. You didn't even know you was in this book. Now, all you know is that you're in this book. That's right, King. You got a, you got a precept, King? Uh, the book of uh, uh, Deuteronomy. Where, where do you want me to start? 30, 32? 32 is fine. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and 32. Bring it out. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What happened to our people? Thy when sons you, and thy daughters shall be given unto another, another people. Didn't you just tell me you don't live with your mom or your dad or none of that? Sons and daughters be given unto another people. Right. This is in the book. Uh and thine eyes shall look and fall with longing for them right, all the day long. Because your parents didn't have no might in their hands to even be able to do anything about it. Maybe they couldn't take care of you right now. Right. Maybe there was something that was holding them back to be able to take care of their child. Right. Maybe mom and dad split up before while you was a baby. Maybe you was uh, a little older and they split up and then they couldn't take care of you. Something happened, but it's in the book. Right. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No might in their hands. What happened to our forefathers and foremothers when they was getting raped, robbed, murdered? Doctor, uh, Mr. Johnson was taking people over to his plantation to Mr. Jackson, splitting children up, right. taking them and ripping them up out their beds, out their family house, not knowing who your mama and your sister is. You think back then that the children was like, yo, I just want her number. I just want to go knock that real quick. No, you was clinging to your family. Right. Why? Because they was literally stealing your family away from you. You was holding on as tight as you could to your family. Teach up. Bring it out, brother. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 54. Bring it out. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. You know what that means? The man that is tender and very delicate. We used to be cool with each other. If you needed something, he like, brother, I got you. If he needed something, you like, brother, I got you. Tender and delicate, right? Cool with each other. You don't just look at each other like, Psh, you ain't nothing. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. His what? His eyes right. shall be evil, evil toward, toward his brother. brother. You ever walk down the street and somebody look at you and they just size you up real quick and you don't even know who they are? And they a so-called black man? And he just look at you like, Psh. Like if he do something, I'm a cracky. If he do something, I'm stealing him. Huh? Yeah, of course you do. Why? Because it's a curse in the Bible. You and probably even looked at somebody like that. And towards the wife of his bosom. You see why mom and dad ain't together no more and we got broken homes? Because also towards the wife of his bosom, right? Meaning that he ain't with his old lady no more. He like, Shh, I want her number. Uh, I got her number, now I want her number. Right. I already got her number, now I want her right. number. That's what it is. We breaking ourselves up. Right? On, no it's right. a curse. And towards the, the remnant of his children. That's why dad ain't in our lives. Towards the remnant of his children. He look at us. Hey, my baby. I ain't even 100% sure that's my baby. I ain't taking care of this child. And towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Which he shall what? Which he, he shall, shall leave. leave. All of us got daddies at home. Which shall he leave. He left us. He's gone from the house. I know my daddy was gone. I was six years old when my dad left. I'm 43 now. My dad gone. He been gone. He left for so long that he passed away before I was even able to see him again. Six years old? Because he shall leave us. He gonna leave us and not be with us. It's a curse in the Bible. We are cursed people. But we are the greatest people on the face of the earth. But as long as you start, keep believing that this thing is the, look at brother, look. As long as you think that this is your Christ, we ain't gonna make it. If he come back, we all going into slavery. You, me, him, 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 all of us going into slavery. If he come back and he the savior. Right. 
Let, let, let's bring out uh, Revelations 1.13, please. Bring out what you got, brother. Okay. This is the book of Revelations chapter 1, verse 13. Bring it out. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. You see these seven candlesticks? All right, you see the menorah that everybody tell you it's Jewish? The seven candlesticks? That's in the Bible about your God. Right. The seven candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Hold on, hold on, just let us finish this. One you, like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man, meaning that that's Christ. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. His outfit went all the way down to his feet, man. And the girt about the path. He had a big golden belt on. With a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, now, who got woolly hair on the face of the planet? Take your hood off. Look to your right. Not you. You look to your right. You look to your left. Who got woolly hair on the face of the planet? Us, right? Right? His hair and his hairs were white like wool. As white as snow. As white as what? As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes is a flame of fire. You know why his eyes was a flame of fire? Brother. Brother, you know why his eyes is a flame of fire? You don't know why? Because he drank wine. Not literal fire, but the most high God drank wine. You want to get Exodus? Genesis. Or Genesis, I'm sorry, 49, 12. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 12. Bring it out. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be what? His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be what? His eyes shall be red with wine. And his teeth white with milk. That's because Christ's favorite drinks was wine and milk. His eyes was red with wine because when you drink wine, when you drink alcohol, period, the whites of your eyes go red. So that's the flamey part, all right? Keep listening. And his feet like unto fine brass. If you take your shoes off, are your feet the same color as your body? Right, his feet like fine brass. What color is brass? Hold on, brother, hold on. What color is brass? That's right. As if they burn in a furnace. And if I take anything and burn it, what color it become? Red. Right, so what color is Christ? What color is Christ? All right, what's your nationality? Israel from the tribe of what? Hold on, brother. Hold on. We got you a flyer, too. Here, you see this? But he had to come to them, but he freed everybody. Every soul. There was no hell. Just as there wasn't a heaven, there was no hell for a very long time. Come What is hell? Eternal flame. Is that, is that what hell is? You Are you in hell now? Yes, I am. Okay, so you're not in flames, though. It's a mental state. Okay, so then it's not eternal flame. However, it is. Okay, but is it manifest down there right now? As we speak. As we speak, is there a hell that's burning right now? We're gonna have a bad dream. If we, as we speak, is there a hell burning right now? It's burning in your lungs right now because you got hell right there in your face. But is there a physical hell right now burning? No, we're in a hell state. Right. We're in a state of hell right now, brother. Right. right. Not that it's eternal fire yet. When is it gonna be eternal fire? 